Hello, welcome to yoga. Um, today we are going to focus on the core. So we're going to do just like we always do. We'll have meditation. We'll start off slow. Lots of good breathing stuff. But I do have some new core things. So you can probably go ahead and call this one the core class. So I added a couple of things. So just see how you like it. And as always, if I call out something that you don't feel is right for your body today, skip it. It's okay. And if you want to try it a little bit and stop, it's totally fine. Totally do what is right for your body. Completely fine. So for, for now, let's just find our best posture today. It could be that I'm on the front of my chair or I'm on the back, whichever one that I like the most. Even if you're on the back though, do try to engage your core. So when I talk about having that good posture, we're not bolt upright. So not, that's bolt upright. See, there's no curve in my low back. That's better. See how that just, that slight curve is what we want. But I'm not here. That would be bad because I get a pinchy in my shoulders and then my ribs are sticking out. So that's not good. That's going to be really pinchy back here. So what I like to do is take my shoulders, roll them back and down, and then take my low ribs back, which spreads my shoulder blades out and softens everything. And another thing we can do to make sure that we're getting into our good posture is we can either using our hip bones in the front or the bottom of our ribs, depending on uh, our, our movement abilities today. Uh, and we can take them and pretend, this sounds crazy, but it's a great way to get your spine in alignment and pretend you're going over a camel hump. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna pretend with my movement that my hip bones are going like this over a camel hump. So while that looks is kind of like that. And when you do that, it, it just unfurls your spine. You see how that, it goes over the camel hump and unfurls it, just like your tablecloth if you're doing like that. So you can also use your rib cage and that's a lifting and a settling back down. All right, so that's a, those are two good ways to get into good natural posture, so that's what you want. And let's just start breathing, let's say in for three, out for four. Now, if that feels too long or too short, do what you need to do, it's completely fine. In and out through your nose, always. So at your own count yourself, in for three and out for four. And on that three, we're not trying to get a gigantic breath. Just gently take what you need for that breath and then get all of it out. And what that does, it turns on our relaxing nervous system and it helps balance our oxygen carbon dioxide, which is what very, very good thing. So you can close your eyes if you want to and just listen to my voice, that's fine. In for three and out for four. If you'd like, you can add your ujjayi breath to it. And what that means is you're still in for three, out for four, but with a slight constriction in your throat. And it sounds kind of like. I'm not sure if you heard that. I hope so. But it's very slight. So I'm not like super strong Darth Vader breath. It's a gentle tightening of the throat. And that also stimulates our relaxing nervous system and our, our vagus nerve. So try that one out, just those breaths for just a little while and see how that goes. <clears throat> All right, so keep breathing. And I, I brought a couple of um, really brief readings I wanted to do today, especially since um, uh, for the live classes is our, our last class, but you'll be able to watch this one on the recording. This, um, what I wanted to read, uh, one thing is from my stroke of insight. And I think I've shared with you guys that I am also a stroke survivor. So, um, immediately wanted to read all I could about it. Um, and I had a hemorrhagic stroke instead of an ischemic stroke. So it's a, you know, a little different. Anyway, the book is really cool. And um, the person who wrote it is also a neuroscientist. So she gets a really interesting point of view. So here's what she says. The number one question I am most frequently asked is, how long did it take you to recover? My standard response and I don't mean to be trite, is recover what? If we define recovery as regaining access to old programs, then I'm only partially recovered. I have been very fussy this time around about which emotional programs I am interested in retaining and which ones I have no interest in giving voice to again, like impatience, criticism, and unkindness. What a wonderful gift this stroke has been in permitting me to pick and choose 
who I want to be in the world. Before the stroke, I believed I was a product of this brain and that I had minimal say about how I felt or what I thought. Since my hemorrhage, my eyes have been open to how much choice I actually have about what goes on between my ears. I really like that. We work with that a lot in meditation, knowing that we are watching what's going through our head, not we aren't what's going through our head. And we pick and choose what we pay attention to. I talked to my little one about this a lot and she says, mommy, I just got so mad. And so I did this and I was like, you chose to do that. She says, no, it just happens. No, you chose it. It just happened really fast. So you've got to learn how to take a breath, then decide. So we try. They call it a practice for a reason. So it's not perfect every time. Next thing I want to read, and this is very brief, is from Yoga Therapy for Stroke. Also a very good book. The foreword is really pretty in the book. He says, in our conventional rehabil rehabilitation world, injury or illness is approached as something to get over, past or beyond. Yoga invites a pause to right now, this moment, this breath, for all of us to ask what is, not what was and not what will be, just what is. It is that simple and that hard. Okay, last book of the day. If you got your eyes closed, please open them up because this is a great one. Um, this was written, this is uh, by Matthew Sanford. He is a yoga teacher and um, quadriplegic and his story is amazing. I highly recommend it. All right, so let's do some other stuff. All right, so let's start with some gentle neck work. And I don't want you to hurt. So if this hurts, I want you to stop, okay? So let's just be gentle and move with our breath, okay? So let's tuck our chin and just breathe into the back of the neck and feel how that feels. Can we have gills back here and we can breathe through the back of our neck. Continue the in for three, out for four. If that feels good to you, and you can also continue the constriction of your throat on the inhale and exhale, or just on the exhale, whatever feels right for you. And now let's continue by taking the chin over to the shoulder very gently, and we'll follow. Today I am wearing a scoop neck, the scoop neck of our shirt, or pretend scoop neck if you're not. I want you to please breathe, inhale on one half, and exhale on the other. Just being aware of each muscle as you pass it. And we're also working on our balance when we do this. Whenever we rotate our head, we're working on our balance. Next time you come back to the front, just come back up, deep breath in between. Nice. Now let's do uh, this one where we take our fingers. You can use one hand or two. You can even do this with one finger. Okay, I'm gonna use two today. So I'm gonna find my collarbone on the left side. I'm gonna go underneath it. I'm gonna press in toward my body and then pull down and then take the other ear toward the shoulder and just breathe. Breathe right into where your edge is. In other words, where it feels intense, breathe right there. Come back to center. Find the other collarbone, go underneath, press in, down, and the other ear goes toward the shoulder. Again, taking it to your personal edge. Try to let that shoulder relax. Sometimes it wants to come up. Try to just let it relax. Wherever it feels most intense, become very aware of that area. And take your breath to that spot. up, deep breath in between. All right, let's do a little karate chop massage. So I'm making my hands like this, keeping this part of my hand kind of hard. And I 
pull my elbows up and I'm reaching between the shoulder blades and just pulling down. This is just gonna help that part of me relax. Remember, I can do this with one hand and my fingers don't have to look like my fingers. They can look in a lot of different ways and still be very effective here. One hand or two, doing what's right for you. And deep breath in between. Now, let's just do some very gentle tractioning of the neck, nothing, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna take my fingertips, my thumb is on my jaw, my fingertips back here, and I'm just going to gently lift. And you see how I'm taking my fingertips and kind of pulling up very gently. And when I get up there, just hold three deep Ujjayi breaths. And if stroking it, stroking feels better than just holding it, go ahead and do that. See how it feels to your neck, pulling up. Just giving a gentle lengthening to the back of your neck. And relax. Nice. And now let's just very gently look to the right. And breathe into wherever your edge feels. Mine is right here on the side. Close your eyes if you want to. Relax your jaw and your scalp. And come back to center. And go to the other side. And for the rest of this class, let's leave our to-do list outside this room. Our roles, whatever they may be, they'll wait. Right now, we're just going to enjoy being together. You can come back to the Deep breath in between. Nice. All right, so let's try another one we haven't done yet. This can be with one hand or two, and your hands don't have to look like mine. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. I wanna do a mudra, and what a mudra is, is a hand position that just helps balance your mind. It gets you to focus and kind of brings you inward. So I'm gonna meet my pinky and thumb and open up the middle fingers in there. So this could look like this, and that's okay. Or the fingers can be different from contractures. That's okay, too. All right. So the point of this is the lotus is a very, very beautiful flower. But it doesn't grow in some perfect English garden or American garden or wherever. It grows in muddy ponds. And it grows because it has a long strong stem that is hooked to the bottom of the pond. Safe, secure. Its beauty comes from being grounded. So that can be a good one to go to when we need to remind ourselves of what's important. And relax, deep breath in between. All right, promised lots of core stuff today. So uh, what I'd like to do now is just join me when you're ready. What I wanna do is inhale out and then reach back in very strong. So I'm pulling, my biceps are flexed. So I'm trying to show off, <laughs> let's come out here. Inhale here and pull back, proud of my bicep. Inhale here <laughs> and pull back, good. And we inhale with a soft belly and we exhale super strong and lifted in the core. Inhale here and exhale back. Now, if you would like to speed up with me, you can, but the rule is we can speed up our arms and our core firing, but we keep breathing slow. second to feel how your body feels just after breathing in that way for what 
six seconds, not even that. Feel how your body feels. That's a wake up breath. Let's try that one more time. And if that was too fast, slow it down. Okay. Inhale here. And we exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And relax. Take note of how you feel. No right or wrong way. So let's do uh, that one more time, but we're going to hold it, be holding our, a little bit different, holding our personal pan pizzas. You know, those ones that are about like this big. When we do that, we know we have a weight there. So we, when we think we have pizza, we turn our shoulders in a certain way and we fire certain muscles. So we've got weight in our hand. We're holding it up. We're resisting against those pizzas. Okay. We do a lot of isometric stuff mixed with yoga. And as long as we're breathing slow and being conscious, I say it counts. Some people won't say that, but I'm going to say it, all right, as yoga. <laughs> all right, so on that note, with a strong core, the strongest one that we have today, start moving the elbows back, keeping parallel to the floor our forearms, okay? Notice I'm not twisting. The strength of my core is keeping me upright, okay? but I'm breathing slow. See if we can inhale for three, exhale for four. Now, when we speed up, the count doesn't have to be that. That's okay. But I want you to breathe as slowly as you can to still feel, you know, I don't want you to get dizzy or feel faint or anything like that. And I'm really flexing my biceps to pull back, okay? And maybe, I'm going to challenge here. Okay, I'm moving kind of fast now is to keep my core straight. So I'm not twisting. I'm staying with those very firm muscles around. I'm trying to move my torso as little as I can. It's going to move a little bit. Breathing slow. Breathing slow, moving fast. And relax, deep breath in between. Okay, I'm definitely awake now. Now that was intense. We were really pulling those muscles in. So if you'd like, give those forearms a little love. You can get up in there if you want to. They go through a lot, especially if we're at the computer a lot. They really do. Maybe give your wrists a little twisty. Just do what feels right for you. Keep twisting the wrists or does rubbing the forearm feel better? Honor what's right for your body. You get the sides. Just rubbing along that bone. Maybe some more here. And maybe we here. Let's add our face to this, okay? I promise I'm not going to look at your face, people who are in the live class. I promise, okay? So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. I'm really exaggerating my face, right? Let's do that a few more. Relax. It's another wake up breath. Whenever we're like pulling the air out like that in that kind of bellows like way, that's a wake up breath. Okay. Times we need a wake up breath, and times we need a calming breath. Deep breath in between. All right. So let's do some things. We're going to do some core work and then counter pose. Core work, counter pose. And a lot of this stuff is stuff that we do together all the time. We got to. A little bit of new things. Let's give these a go. All right. So what I want you to think about, please, is your rib cage. Now, I'm not talking about just the front. You know, it goes all the way around the back, and it's big, right? And our rib cage is where our, sh our shoulders start connecting. There's a lot going on. You know, it's not just down here. It's not just our lungs. A lot connects to it. Okay. And so what we want to do is we're not bolt upright. We've got that natural curve in our low back. But we want to think about the muscles around our spine pulling in because that's our core. 
our core actually goes from the tip of our tongues all the way down our spine, down the back of our legs to our feet. That's our core. It all is connected. I've actually seen it on, we won't go there, but I've seen it on a gross anatomy situation. Anyway, it's, it's all connected. So muscles around the spine. Think about those. So picture those muscles as we do this. So rib cage. Let's take our rib cage and just take it side to side. Now the challenge here sometimes is to not lift up the hip bone if the hip bone likes to come up sometimes. Maybe not. Now, we're going to our edge, but not beyond it. Because we don't want to hurt our low back here. We want to get strong, focus on those muscles. Now move with the breath, inhale, exhale. So slow it down a little, inhale, exhale. All the air out when you go to the side. Inhale, all the air out. So you can work on your core and your mind at the same time. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And then relax. And we're gonna do a forward bend counter pose. Counter pose is just like, we've been working really hard and we wanna do something to kind of bring you back to homeostasis, the no, not like balance, let's, that's a better word. Okay, so for that, let's take a forward bend. So our forward bend, remember, it could be hands in the lap, leading with the heart, back of the neck and sacrum in the line. Sacrum is the flat part of your low back that's below the curve, but above your rear end. I'm still breathing. Or my forward bend could be reaching, I've got my computer on a little, plastic box here. Now I might be reaching long, but I still want to try to keep the back of the head and the sacrum in line, leading with my heart. So when I say leading with my heart, it means I'm not folding my shoulders over there, back and down. See, I've still got my good posture, even though I'm forward. Shoulders are back and down, low ribs are tucked. Good. Reaching long. Or my hands are here, or maybe my forearms in my, in my lap. Do what's right for you. A lot of different ways we can do this. And then come back up, deep breath in between. Okay, we're gonna do another movement with the rib cage. So let's keep that muscles around our spine and we wanna think about the rib cage going around it in a circle. So first take your rib cage over to the left and inhale around and now exhale toward the back part, the strength of your core bringing you over. Now let's take it slow, but you're really pulling your muscles into the spine, okay? So nice and slow. Your sacrum is the tip of the ice cream cone. Your shoulders are the top. Try to keep your shoulders parallel to the floor. Notice I'm not dipping down like this. This is not the movement that I'm talking about. Okay, we're keeping them parallel to the floor. That other movement, you're not going to engage your core. And that's what we want to do. Maybe one more time around like this. Remember, we exhale on the back part. Exhale, lifting in and up on the belly button. And come back to the front. Take a nice deep inhale. Let's go the opposite way. Nice and slow. Exhale, strong, strong, strong. Good. And you don't. You can make this movement tiny. That's okay, as long as you're thinking about those core muscles and mainly using them to help you come around the back part. They're engaged on the front part too, but it's harder around the back part. Let's do that one a couple more times. One more time. And come back to center. All right, so there's a lot going on right here. So let's take a triangle to counterpose that. So remember our triangle, I'm gonna start with, um, and it's totally fine to do this only on one side, or you can do it with one arm, maybe one arm doesn't work the same as the other arm. That's okay, totally fine. But I'll show you, um, demonstrate how I'm gonna do it, is I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna turn the top part of my hand on the inside of my right leg and my left hand is going to come up 
palm out, and then I'm gonna slide. Maybe I slide a tiny bit and then have a gentle twist. This is twisting the top of our back very gently, or maybe I come down some more. I'm gonna come down to what's right for me. And I'm gonna make sure that my sit bones aren't lifting up. If they start lifting up, I know I've gone too much and I need to back off, okay? And once we get here, three deep Ujjayi breaths. Not easy to breathe here. And come back to center. All right, left hand. So the top of my left hand is gonna go on the inside of my left thigh. My right hand is facing out, up it goes. And remember, my triangle could be right here. That's fine. Or it's gonna come right here. We're counterposing what we just did. Big deep breath. Big deep breath in between. Nice. So let's do our cat cow. So that's where we make a C shape. I'm gonna do it sideways. Make a C shape with our spine and then we make another C shape going the other way. Now, I know I tell you not to do this, but when we're counter posing that it is good, that back and forth. So it has its moments. Now on that note, when we go back like this, and then we go forward, let's try to squash the blueberry. So I'm not flopping forward. I'm taking a pretend blueberry behind my low back and I'm trying to rock my hips back and squish it. Or I'm thinking about that if my hips don't do that. Okay, I'm thinking about taking the belly button in toward the spine, rocking the hips back and squishing a pretend blueberry. Okay, so I'm not falling, okay? So take an inhale here, make a C shape. And on the exhale, with a firm core, squish the blueberry. You can tuck your chin if you'd like. And the shoulders come forward. Hold that for a sec. And then come back. Now move at your own pace. If you want to go like me and we're holding a little bit isometrically, that's OK. If you don't, that's also OK. Thing is, we want to use our core to squash the blueberry. Inhale here. And tucking the chin. Exhale, squash the blueberry. I'm tilting my hips back. Strong, strong, strong core. And then back. Let's do a couple more of those. So we inhale here. And we exhale. We're squashing the blueberry. Squashing the blueberry. And relax. One more time. Inhale here. Tilting the hips back, squashing the blueberry, tucking the chin if I want to, and relax. All right. So back to our good posture. Let's do the big pizza this time. Let's shake things up and start on the left. I don't want to leave a little left out starting on that side. So find your big pizza. So what that is, the big pizza makes you hold. So look, if you were holding a little pizza, Look what you do. There's a reason I use all this silly stuff. So little pizza, we're here, but if we got a big pizza, the pepperonis would be right in my face. So that would be bad. So we want to be out here holding the arm up externally rotating. All right. So inhale the shoulder back. Exhale, get long on the side. Pretend that you're Pepperonis, you're trying to stick them to the ceiling and the ceiling is heavy. So I'm resisting isometrically. Oh, the ceiling is heavy. I'm having to push up against it, lengthening here and soften. Let's do that again. Inhale back. Exhale long. Push the pepperonis up there. Push the pepperonis up there. My sit bone stays down or I'm thinking about it being down and relax. So now with the elbow relaxed, I've still got my pizza. I'm gonna take an inhale and then I wanna take it to the side, okay? Now I could take it to the side a little or a lot and I'm gonna make sure I'm safe however I'm sitting. If I want to, I can look up. If that feels weird to my neck, definitely skip it. 
three deep Ujjayi breaths. Think about expanding the rib cage, unhooking the diaphragm, setting it free. See if you can do that in for three, out for four Ujjayi breaths. Whenever you've done about three, ease back, but use your core to ease you back. Don't flop back. Core eases you back. Nice. Pizza. <laughs> Take an inhale with the shoulder back. Exhale the pizza to the ceiling. Press, 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 press. Resist. When you resist like that, you're going to fire these muscles even more. Resist the ceiling is weighs a ton. And I'm sticking the pepperonis to it. Good, and now relax the arm. Let's do that one more time. Inhale the shoulder back. Exhale, press the pepperonis up, up, up they come. Oh, the ceiling weighs a ton and pushing against it, resisting, opening, resisting against it. Good. Big breath and relax. This time we're gonna take it to the side. So inhale it back. Exhale, press, soften the elbow, and now take it to the side. Make sure you're secure. Take it to the side. Maybe look up. Do what's right for you. Big breath. Three deep Ujjayi breaths. In for three and out for four. my time here. I can't see the time on my computer because it's too far away. So I want to make sure that I'm watching my time. Okay, there's one that I want to do today and it's a little silly. So get ready. But I want to point out what we're doing here. This is what we're going to do. It's more core work, but it's a little bit silly. We're working obviously on core strength, respiratory expansion, gastric motility. This next one is one that is good to do if you uh, need if you are trying to go to the bathroom more easily. Um, and then also silliness, because silliness is important. It makes us laugh. It's very, very good for us, okay? So this is gonna be silly. What I'm gonna try to do, and remember, you can turn your, you know, you can turn your cameras off. I can't, or if this is recorded, I can't see you, don't worry about it. It's okay to be silly. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my elbows together, or maybe just one, and if they won't, don't go together, I'm gonna to keep them like this, okay? And then I'm going to write the first six letters of my name with my elbows, okay? So here I go, slowly. Whatever your name is, you're using your core. Remember to breathe, nice and slow. First six letters of your name. Use your core. Whenever you finish those letters, just relax, deep breath in between. Okay, now for the hard part. <laughs> now this is where inner hemispheric coherence comes in. In other words, we want the right and left brain talking to each other. See if we, and don't worry about being perfect at this. See if we can do that and write our names, the letters backwards, okay? I'm here, or I'm here, or I'm here, or I'm here. Be where you are today. I'm writing with my core, my name, but backwards. Oh, there's me. Yes, this is silly, and that is okay. Now, to counterpose that one, take a nice deep inhale out and a nice hug. This one's different than cat cow because we're not, we're not firing our core here. We're just doing this to feel good in counterpose, okay? Inhaling here. Well, we're firing our core, but we're not trying to. Let's put it that way because it fires no matter if we want to or not. And one more just to counterpose that. All right, so 
let's try one more. Let's do a rib cage rainbow. So what I'd like to try is your rib cage here, take it to the left, kind of like what we were doing a minute ago when we're going back and forth. Let's see if we can take it up and to the other side. And breathe slowly while we're doing it. Inhale around. Exhale around. Also, we're gonna we're kind of lean on time today, so I'm gonna skip this next one, but you can also do the writing your name with your belly button. So this one works the upper core and more, uh, ex more gastric motility, more expansion of the breathing apparatus. I think that's a word. Anyway, <laughs> then the belly button one will work more the low core. So you can pretend your belly button is a pin, that's okay. All right, so. Give those a whirl on your own and see how those feel. But the rest of the day, uh, I do want us to check my time. Let me see. Oh yes, we want to get to get to our meditation. Make sure we have plenty of time for that. Um, let's see. I have one one more that I wanted to do before we do the meditation. Um, let's do. We'll call it ball to warrior two. Okay. So what I mean by that is if. If we can move our legs to the side, go ahead. If we can't, we just turn to the side and make our warrior, make our warrior arm. Shoulders are rolled back and down. I'm looking in, into that middle finger, trying to keep my chin parallel to the floor. I feel like somebody's pulling me back strongly. And I'm gonna take a nice deep inhale. Then I'm gonna, with my core strength, fold into a ball. Let your core move you. I fold into a ball. Now I'm gonna make my warrior on the other side. I inhale and extend very slow breathing here. And exhale into a ball. I'm just gonna do a couple of sides, okay? Inhale, expand. Strong, strong, strong. Exhale, contract. Come back and regroup to get ready for expansion. And contraction. Good, and then relax. All right, so moving back and forth, the out, the in smoothly, that tells our brain to do that when we leave class. So when we transition from, whether we're helping children with schoolwork, doing our own work, just whatever we're doing, we wanna transition with grace and always remember what's important while we're doing it. All right, so on that note, let's get ready for our meditation. So get comfy, however you like to get comfy. You can lay down on the bed, couch, scoot back in the chair, sit at the front of the chair if you're comfortable, however you like to do it. All right, so. I want to do a little what a breathing exercise that I really like, and this one's not going to be hard work like some of the ones we just did a minute ago. What I'd like for you to do is just get your good posture going. If you want, close your eyes and just listen to my voice. It's totally fine. What I'd like for you to do on the inhale is pull pretend water up through your legs, through the front of your belly to the top of your head, and then on the exhale, let it waterfall down the back of your head and your spine, okay? So pretend on the inhale and go at your own pace that you're pulling water up through your feet. The water comes over the top of the belly and the face and then long exhales down a waterfall down our back, okay? So at your own pace, do that a couple more times, pulling the water up Letting it fall, waterfall down the back of the spine, just running off. Nice warm water. Pull it up through your feet, through your body, up the front, and down the back. And do a couple more of those at your own pace. 
you may even feel a sensation of energy as you imagine this. And you may not. Either way is okay. Try that a couple more times. And then just after that, just go back to effortless breath. Let the body breathe itself. No work. See what happens to your body when you say to yourself, I have everything that I need. A lot of times throughout the day, we're striving to finish, work on something or be something. What if we've already got it right here, right now? It's here. I have everything that I need. I don't need anything else to be complete. I have everything that I need. See what happens to your body when you say to yourself, all I have to do is receive. And yes, I can receive. All I have to do is receive. And it's okay to receive. I don't have to give all the time. All I have to do is receive. Breathe in, let. Breathe out, go. Breathe in, let. Breathe out, go. Often there is an intense identification with the body. See what it would be like to think to yourself, I have a body, but I am not my body. My body may find itself in different conditions of health or sickness. I may be rested or tired, but that has nothing to do with myself, my real I. I value my body as a precious instrument of action and experience in the world but it is only an instrument. I treat my body well. I seek to keep my body in good health, but it is not myself. My true nature does not change. I have emotions, but I am not my emotions. My emotions are changing and sometimes contradictory. My emotions may swing from love to hatred, from calm to anger, from joy to sorrow, yet my essence, my true nature does not change. I remain. So a wave of emotion may come over me. I know that it will pass in time. Therefore, I am not my emotions. So I can observe and understand my emotions and I can direct them and utilize them. It is clear they are not myself. I have a mind, but I am not my mind. My mind is a valuable tool of discovery and expression, but it is not the essence of my being. Contents of my mind are constantly changing as my mind embraces new ideas, knowledge, and experience. I am a center of pure awareness, of self-consciousness. I observe my body emotions and mind. This essence of me, a center of pure awareness, is the permanent factor in the ever-changing flow of my personal life. I seek to achieve a constant awareness of this fact in the midst of everyday life. Breathe in, let, breathe out, go. Let my voice be your voice as we take our attention around our body, just being coming aware of it, no right or wrong way. I invite you to take your attention to your lips, the space between the lips. The right cheek, the left cheek,
right nostril, left nostril, right ear, left ear, all across the forehead. all down the scalp to the muscles around the neck where the connect, neck connects to the collarbone where the collarbone connects to the shoulder. Right bicep left bicep, right tricep, left tricep. And let's move on down to the hands. Just bring your attention to the right thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, and pinky, palm of the right hand, top of the right hand, the entire right hand is a field of radiant sensation. Left thumb, left first finger, left second finger, left third finger, left pinky finger, palm of the left hand, top of the left hand, the left hand as a whole. And bring your attention now to your belly as it softly expands and contracts. The body breathing itself. Easy, effortless. All I have to do is receive. Right thigh, left thigh. Right knee, left knee, right shin, left shin, right ankle, left ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, pinky toe, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and pinky toe. both feet at the same time. And let's bring up that warm water again, up through the feet, up the legs to the belly, up the front of the body to the neck, up and over the face, gently down the back of the head and the spine, warm and soft effortless. Breathe in, let, and breathe out, go. If you feel even a drop of contentment right here, right now, I invite you to let it open up and spread throughout your body. plant 
unfurling in one of those time-lapse videos. Even if it's just a drop, let that unfurl from your heart, opening up through your chest, into both shoulders, down the arms, out the fingers. Also going down from the heart into the belly, into the front body and the back body, down the legs, contentment unfurling down through I invite you to experience your, experience yourself as this contentment, as a field of radiant sensation from which everything arises and to which everything goes. Breathe in, let, breathe out, go. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. And bring an awareness to your fingertips. Maybe opening your eyes if you're ready. Becoming aware of the womb. And take a second to thank yourself for being good to your body and mind. For this present awareness and this self-care that is this beautiful ancient practice. If you want to, you bring your hands to heart center. The divine in my heart sees, respects, and connects to the divine in yours. Namaste.